Hello dear children, parents, teachers and all the well-wishers. Welcome back to another beautiful poem which talks about Enchanted Shot. Enchanted, which has a magical spell. We all love magic. We want things to happen in a fraction of a second. But if we have a magical shot where we can wear it and the minute you wear it, you'll transform into something else. How nice. John Hay, the poet, he has written this ballad, ballad, which talks about a story, narrating a story, but telling a story in the form of a poem. That's the beauty of this poem. And he is an American novelist, a statesman. He is a, a, a private secretary to Abraham Lincoln. And he's written many poems. And this is one of the beautiful poem of John Hay. Let us start as it is a beautiful story. I would like to read a few lines from the poem. There is not much for me to explain, but still I want everyone to enjoy this beautiful ballad called The Enchanted Shirt. The king was sick, his cheek was red, and his eye was clear and bright. He ate and drank with a kingly zest and peacefully snowed at night. The king was sick. His cheek was red. When you talk about sickness, someone is sick. You say, so and so, he's sick. His face has become very bleak. He's not able to eat. He's not able to sleep. But here the first, first stanza itself is so contradictory with the first line of the stanza. King was sick. But his cheeks were red. He's so hale and healthy. He's happily eating like kingly zest. He's enjoying his life. Nothing. He's, there is nothing. His eye is very clear. And he sleeps so peacefully. Snores at night. If anyone is sick, can they sleep? No. But he sleeps so peacefully. But he's sick. But he said he was sick. When king says he was sick, everybody should oblige. Yes, king. Is there anyone who can speak against a king? No one dares. But he said he was sick. And a king should know. And doctors came by the score. They did not cure him. He cut off their heads and sent to the schools for more. When king said he's sick, no one can question. And doctors came. He said, I am sick call the doctors. They came in scores, big numbers. They all tested him. They said nothing wrong. He got so angry, he cut off their heads. He sent to the medical colleges, the schools, medical schools to get the specialist to look at him, to tell what kind of sickness he has. At last two famous doctors came, famous here, the most popular, and one was as poor as a rat. He had passed his life in studious style and never found time to grow fat. As rat, as you know, rat struggles hard for the food, right? And rat is not a healthy one here. Very, uh, uh, in a uh, kind of sarcasm used here. He is like a rat. He has not found time enough to eat and grow fat. He toiled. He's, he's a studious person. Always he looked into all the medical books and he was, you know, updating himself to treat his patients well. The other had never looked in a book. His patients gave him no trouble. If they recovered, they paid him well. If they died, their heirs paid double. The second doctor is quite opposite. He never looked into a book. He enjoyed his life. Never his parents given him a trouble because... He used to treat them and when they are quite hale and healthy, they used to pay him quite a lot of amount. If they, he is not in a position to heal them or you know treat them well, if they die, his hairs paid double to him. So even if he treated well, good amount of money, not treated well also, got the double amount from the hairs, from the children and the grandchildren. Then... Together they looked at the royal tongue as the king on his couch reclined. In succession they thumped his august chest, but no trace of disease could find. So together this 
a rat like doctor who's a very studious kind of a person and the other one who never looked into the book both have checked his tongue quite healthy they thumped his august chest the royal chest of the king he they couldn't find any trace of ill health or sickness the old sage said you are as sound as a nut hang him up roared the king in a gale in a 10 knot gale of royal rage the other leech grew a shade of pale beautiful lights the old sage is a very studious man he is a very honest and sincere doctor he said you are quite healthy you are as sound as a nut immediately the king said hang him up he screamed like 10 knot gales the as if the wind speedy wind how is it roaring kind and the other leech the other doctor doctors got a nickname in the olden days as leeches and the other leech became pale oh is he going to hang me if i say nothing is wrong with this king then but he pensively rubbed his sagacious nose and thus his prescription ran king will be well if he sleeps one night in the shirt of a happy man sagaciously pensively very thoughtfully is rubbing his nose and then his prescription began he's a smart one right he never looked into the book but he's smart he can act according to the times then he given a prescription if king sleeps one night one night in the shirt of a happy man he'll be all right you can imagine immediately what the king might have done wide over the realms the couriers rode and fast their horses ran and many they saw and many they spoke but they found no happy man immediately the messengers of the king started going one to east one to north one to south they all went they looked for the happy man unfortunately they couldn't find anyone to bring shirt for king they found poor men who would fain be rich and rich who thought they were poor and men who twisted their waists and stays and women that shot very beautifully explained the different kinds of people they come across in the kingdom they saw two men by the roadside sit and both bemoan their lot for one had buried his wife he said and the other one had not so they met some people they were all sitting roadside they thought okay they are happy man what did you? just now buried my wife another said i don't even have a wife so this kind of you know expressions every day meeting so many in the kingdom trying to know what kind of lifestyle what kind of living they all have so the messengers are trying to record everything every day at last as they came to a village gate a beggar lay whistling there and he whistled he sang laughed rolled on the grass in the soft june air at last they came to one village gate they saw one beggar happily rolling in the green grass laughing happy they thought he is the man so they were the the weary we are very tired because every day they were moving around they were going around they are searching and they the tired couriers tired messengers when they looked at this beggar they felt really happy they paused and looked at the scamp so blith and gay blith and gay very happy and cheerful and one of them said heaven save you friend you seem to be happy today one of the messengers said heaven good heavens it's a beautiful way of starting a conversation you seem to be so happy today oh yes fair sirs the rascal laughed and his voice rang free and glad an idle man has so much to do that he never has time to be sad he immediately said oh fair sirs i'm an idle man i don't have this work or that work i can be rolling on any grass i can be jumping on any tree what what not i an idle man has where is the time to be sad i'm a, such a happy person then our courier thought this is our man the courier said our luck has led us aright i will give you a hundred ducats friend for the loan of your shirt tonight then our messenger said we came to the right person he is the most happiest and they said my friend i'll pay you 100 ducats can you give your shirt we bought we want to borrow your shirt for one night then what is the answer this beggar has given the merry black god by lay back on the grass and laughed till his face was black i would do it god what and he roared with fun but i haven't a shirt to my back he laid back on the grass he laughed so much he said if god is willing i am ready to give you a shirt 
can you see i don't have i have a bare body there's no shirt for me i don't have a shirt each day to the king the reports came in of his unsuccessful spies and the sad panorama of human woes passed daily under his eyes every day evening the messengers go back they reported the king's court king today is also the unsuccessful day we couldn't find today we found a happy man but he doesn't have a shirt so king was trying to understand trying to know the reality of the people of his kingdom and he grew ashamed of his useless life and his maladies hatched in gloom he opened his windows and let the air of the free heaven in, in, into his room he was so ashamed of his behavior he was eating he was drinking he is enjoying his life but he feels he is sick but when he realized he came to know the different pains and agonies of his people in the kingdom he was ashamed he opened his uh, window he allowed the air to come inside that means he wanted everything happening around outside to know what is happening with so that he can realize the last paragraph is the turning point the last stanza of the poem and out he went to the world and toiled in his own appointed way and the people blessed him the land was glad and the king was well and gay after messengers were giving all the information when they searched they couldn't find a happy man he realized he started going into the people he started going outside his palace and castle and people loved to look at the king when he is working in the streets along with the other people they blessed him he started living happily he forgot about all that sick feel in him because he made his presence meaningful this poem always teaches us it's not that we just sit at one place and think of okay this is my agony this is my pain this is my suffering try to know the ground reality then you feel how blessed you are you feel how happy we are how safe we are this is a beautiful poem by john hay the enchanted shot try to read at your leisure enjoy have a blessed day god bless you all